Yo, what's good? This your boy Zay. Exclusive Session TV. First podcast episode is here, man. Y'all been waiting. I've been waiting. I've been wanting to do this for years, for real. Like, I've been talking to my partners for so long about starting a podcast and, hey, I'm finally making it happen. Uh, hope y'all enjoy the journey. We finna grow from here. And uh, we can only go up. But, yeah, um, today... We're going to be talking about a couple of topics. Now, for the first podcast episode, I didn't want it to be too, too long. Um, but I did want it to be something um, that I felt was very, very important, not only to myself, but to, to the people. And uh, I did put a poll on my uh, IG the other day, just asking a couple of topics of what, you know, I feel like people would want uh, to hear or talk about. And uh, the two topics that I'm going to talk about today is... Uh, self-love and mental health uh, when it comes to family and friends, specifically um, to being toxic. Um, I feel like those two go hand in hand. I feel like I have a lot to say on it. Um, but like I said, I don't want it to be too long, but I do have a lot to say on it because of actually dealing with it myself, uh, especially the self-love thing. I feel like that's something that... Um, we at we as people we we all kind of to a point you know at some point in life struggle with self love you know that that feeling of of not really being genuinely happy with yourself um, and for myself I find myself I find myself in that position what is it maybe three years ago that was that uh, twenty eighteen so twenty eighteen was one of the best years and worst years of my life. I uh, graduated college and uh, I got a job out to California, got to move. I just thought like, I thought it was like gonna be the, I thought it was the beginning of like, just life for me, just like new new beginnings. Ended up being like the worst shit, man. I ended up finding out I had a kid on the way at the time. Um, I ended up finding out I had diabetes. What else? Uh, became mentally so so depressed. Honestly, um, a lot of people probably don't know, but man, I I really was so depressed, and actually got down to the lowest where I actually became suicidal. Honestly, and most of that came to a point uh, self love. Honestly, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't happy with myself, and I wasn't happy where I was at in life. Honestly, like. I had goals and aspirations of what I wanted to accomplish, but it just wasn't happening like I wanted it to happen. And I found myself uh, constantly trying to make everybody else happy, but yet I wasn't happy myself. And honestly, I feel like as humans, we do that a lot. Uh, we tend to, you know, look to please others. Um, and then we find ourselves unhappy. And that's what happened with me. I, I find myself depressed because I I constantly was trying to, I'm such a caring person and um, I find myself constantly trying to please everybody, make everybody happy. And honestly, I learned now that you can't make people happy. Like that's not for you. Uh, you have to make yourself happy. And, um, me doing all of that made me depressed. I was I was trying to make everybody happy, do this and that, please them, and it still was never enough. And in the process, I lost myself. Like I didn't know who I was. Um, I found myself distanced from uh, friends that I had good relationships with, family, just a lot. Like I, I wasn't myself at all. And it's just because I, I didn't love myself, honestly. I, I was I was trying to, like I said, make everybody else happy, and um, all in all, it, it tore me up mentally, and um, that's one of the things we have to, you know, take a little bit more serious in in life. It's our mental health, because um, you know you find yourselves in, in situations where a lot of situations of life can be avoided, um, but we find we we as humans we naturally um, like to be comfortable. So we don't like to be uncomfortable. 
So when you get um, when you get uncomfortable, it's not pleasant, and um, you'll find yourself sometimes going back to what you felt was comfortable, even if it's toxic or bad. And um, I found myself in that in that situation. Like I said, at at that point in 2018, uh, so much was going on. You know, like I said, I graduated, and then right after I graduated, like. I found out like the day after my birthday, I was having a kid on the way. Uh, wasn't really, I mean, it, it was kinda, it was like I was sad because of how, how it happened because I wasn't really planning on it, but I was happy because, you know, I was about to be a father. Um, and then right after that, I got offered a job in California. So ended up taking that job to California. You know, the whole goal of me to do that was, you know, I was thinking about my family that I had, you know, to take care of at the time. I'm, with an ex taking care of her daughter, so I'm taking care of another nigga's child. Um, I had my own child on the way. And I'm just thinking about what I can do to make sure they they straight. And um, the whole goal of when I was out to California was to make sure that, you know, my kid was gonna be good. Like it wasn't even by myself at that point. And uh, as it should, it should be, and it should be that way. I mean, your kids, I feel like if you have kids, kids come first. And um and like like I said, every everything I was doing was to try to make sure that, you know, my child was gonna have a a, a stable a stable um a place in, in life once once they came. And um in that in that time, you know, so much shit happened, man. Like I got out to I got out to um the job out there in California. I actually did some training out in Rhode Island for a month. So I got to like stay out and live in Rhode Island for a month. The last week when I was getting ready to fly to California is when I found out I was, had diabetes. I was in um, the hospital for three days all alone, family, you know, thousands of miles away. And um, at that point, you know, life, like, life hit me. And, uh, you know, I really wasn't, uh, you know, at first I was sad, but then like, I just kind of had to tell myself, you know, it's life. Um, it's nothing I can really do about it. I mean, just you have to change your lifestyle at this point. It's definitely a big change in lifestyle. Uh, it was definitely different for me, but I try not to get down on it. Like I never, honestly, honestly, I honestly don't think I ever really just, other than the initial, you know, finding out, let it ever get to me mentally where I, you know, was just like sad about myself for for having that. Um, but really what came to the depression part was, um, the toxic ex, um, it, it was just like, it was never, I ne it was never enough, you know, like, and I found out you can do, you can do so much for someone, even it's, it's other, it's other things. Like sometimes people look, you know, at the monetary things. Um, but it's so much more, you know, effort and things you can put in into relationship and things. And even then, it still will never be enough for, for people. And um, I found myself just, you know, constantly trying to make everybody else proud, proud of me. And um, I said it, it still like was never enough. It just and it, and it made me super depressed. You know, like I said, um, I got to a point where. You know, I wasn't really fucking with family. Um, you know, I, I didn't know one, didn't nobody know I had a baby or a child on the way. It was, it was like a super secret. Like my my own dad didn't find out until supposedly had a baby and everything. Um, I kept it a secret. Like I felt like it wasn't no anyone's business. Honestly, um, I didn't really want to hear the judgment that people might have to say. And actually, you know, how the how the situation played out in the end is actually probably a good thing that I didn't tell people because it probably would have hurt me even more uh, to try to have to explain everything to family, you know. So I, I guess, you know, with me not telling them and how everything played out, it actually worked out for the better. Um, actually, you know, I, at this point in life, I don't regret anything that happens uh, because everything that happens in life, I feel like happens for a reason. And um, if what happened that year didn't happen, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And like I said, now I'm man, I love myself, dog. Like you can't tell me nothing. 
I'm confident as hell. Like, I didn't have this confidence a couple years ago at all because of, like I said, I found myself just trying to please others. I wasn't, I wasn't living my life for myself. I wasn't living my life trying to make sure I was happy. I was trying to make sure everybody else was happy. And in the end, I ended up being miserable, ended up being depressed. And um, once you get that to that point in life where you find your, your purpose and you find your happiness for yourself, then life is a lot easier, a lot less stress-free. Um, you know, I feel like at this point in my life, um, I'm ready to be in a relationship. But at the same time, it's like you have to, I have to, like, I know what I want and I know what I don't want. And on top of that, it's like, I feel like I want to make sure before I jump into any relationship that it's going to be something that be long term. I don't want to just be on some, some shit that's going to be here today, be together for a month or a couple months and then break up like that's just relationship hunting is is tiring for sure man it's very tiring i had my whole phase had all of that man that's boring i mean at some point you know when it, it get too easy and when it get too easy it get boring honestly keep it real with you and um yeah man i mean, honestly um i was telling somebody earlier uh yesterday they was telling me about themselves. They was just saying, they were saying something. I don't want to go into specifics, but they was just kind of talking about how, how um, what they were doing currently was for themselves, like far as to try to, you know, make themselves feel good about themselves. Like, because I, I mean, we all have our insecurities. I, I still have my own insecurities today that I struggle with, but I don't let it overlap like my life or my overall love for myself. Like it doesn't overshadow, like, like of course, you know, it's something, you know, you, you constantly deal with, but you eventually get over it. But it's certain things that I feel like if you don't love yourself, how can you expect someone else to love you? And, that, and that's what I told the girl. I was like, um, she said, she was like, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for me. And I said, you know, you honestly, you have to love yourself first. If you don't love yourself, how can you expect anyone else to love you? And that's just like a just true statement in life. Like you can't you can't expect love from someone else if you don't love yourself. And I feel like a lot of times we we get into relationships and things like that, trying to find happiness from another person. When honestly, you need to find that happiness within yourself. You can't expect someone else to give you the happiness. Don't I'm not saying that, you know, people can't bring joy to your life and, you know, make you feel good about yourself. But honestly, I feel like to be in a healthy relationship, stable relationship, you, you should be able to love yourself first. And um if you haven't got past, you know, like your hurt and things like that, definitely shouldn't be getting into any relationships because all you're gonna do is is end up hurting that person, regardless of if you try intentionally or not, it's just kind of just, it just, it'll happen because how can you expect to be in a healthy relationship if you ain't never got over your hurt from the past or if you're still struggling with it? You don't want to drag that, that baggage into the next relationship and end up putting that on somebody else and all in all taking away their happiness because, you know, like I said, as human beings, I mean, like I said, myself, I'm a caring person. So a lot of times, you know, I look out for other people the way they wouldn't look out for me. And, you know, that was something that hurt. So I go going into the next topic, the uh, mental health, family and friends. When I was depressed, um, one of the things that kind of bothered me when I was depressed is I put out the signs and the signs for help. Little stuff, you know, like you put out, you know, little posts and things. Kind of, you know, attention seeking to a point. Um, but it's it's good attention. You really put it out there just to see if people really care, honestly, uh, or if they don't give a fuck. And, you know, when I was putting these things out, 
it showed me who was really there for me, who really cared. And it shocked me to see, you know, certain family and friends would see, you know, the things I would put in and would just like overlook it. And you, and you could see that they seen it. And just to see that they don't ever try to reach out, it kind of fucked with me, honestly. And, um, and I guess that's just because of the person I am. I'm such a caring person, so it kind of bothers me when, um, when you're out there and you're there for people and all the time, like when they're down and they're depressed and things like that, but they don't check for you or checking up on you. And like I said, it bothered me. It really did. It honestly did. And uh, to this day, honestly, I, I move different. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I got I got out of the depression that I was in um, by myself and through God honestly, and with God. But honestly, it was only, you know, about two or three people that, that was there for me when I was depressed. And I'll never forget them at all. Like, and I, I actually, I'm going to mention you because y'all deserve that. My boy Jay Sleep, Justin, and my boy DeQuandris. I always, you know, respect y'all niggas for real. And like, y'all mean for everything. Like, I'll never forget y'all niggas there. I was there when I was about to kill myself. Legit. Had a gun in my hand. Like, them two dudes right there, real dudes, like, pulled up on me, stopped me. Like, that showed me that day, like, somebody cared. Because at that point in life, I, I had got to a point where I honestly didn't feel like anybody cared anymore. And to have them two do that, I'll never forget that. Regardless of we speak every day or not, I always remember that. And they'll always be like, I always gonna have some love for them, for sure. Um, another person that was there for me, Another way is my homegirl, Shay. We haven't spoke really like that in a, in a long time, but she always was there for me too. Like she would reach out and things. We had our talks and things like that. So, you know, shout out to you, Shay, for real. I respect that too. Um, but yeah, man, like I said, it wasn't really that many people, honestly, that, and um, like I said, it sucks. It sucks to, you know, be there for so many people, dog, and to not have the same energy when it comes to you. It sucks. So now I have gained my mental health to a point where, you know, I don't I don't really get depressed. I don't stress. I try not to stress. And um I had to cut off a lot of people. Um change my energy. I'm still a caring person, but I learned to not give certain people my energy because I feel like people know I'm a strong mentally person. And sometimes they try to grasp onto that to get out of their negative, toxic situations. And um, like I said, it's, it's nothing wrong with being there for people. But at some point, you can't keep being there for people and they never there for you. Because it's like that's toxic on them for you to constantly use other people to to get yourself out of situations. But you don't get that same energy. You don't check up on people and just like Anybody that truly knows me knows if if I see if I see a partner or homeboy, homegirl, family, if I see you like post something on your on your story or whatever, like you in pain or you just I'm gonna hit you just simple, you good? Simple as that. I, I might not even go into detail. You don't have to tell me the details, but just a simple you good. I'll do that just because I care. And I just want them to know I care. If you don't if you don't know anybody else care, just know I care. Um, and that's just the type of person I am, man. I had to get to a point where I understood that everybody not built like me. Um, sucks, but everybody not built like me. But at the same time, um, you know, you had to, uh, you know, it's life. You you cut off, you have to, you have to cut off people, family, friends, uh, for the better, for your, be your, your better mental health. Um, I don't really have the best relationship with my mom and dad like all right uh i love my family to death all my family like i ride or die i die for my family any day regardless of what standing we are in but just because we family just because we blood don't mean i gotta fuck with you honestly um i can love you from afar um and that's just simple as that i'm at a point in life where there's nobody that can make me feel bad about the things and the decisions that I make. 
um, because at the end of the day, I have to live my own life. And that's kind of what I want y'all to know. Um, I know sometimes family and friends and other people will try to make you feel bad about your decisions about choosing to not fuck with certain family members. Um, and we all have our reasons for why not. You know, sometimes it's petty stuff. Now, the petty stuff, you know, sometimes you just got to be the bigger person. And, like some shit is not, you know, work, work, just having, just being petty, just and hanging on to that because you end up regretting it. But like legit, like legit issues. We some people, you know, have legit issues and reasons why they don't, you know, fuck with certain family in it. Like myself. I'm not going to go into the details because I don't, I'm not the type of person that put my personal business in. I'm not trying to, I don't want to ever put people out there to make them look in a bad, bad way. But um, I'll give you a situation. So last year, um, I moved, like, yeah, last year I moved with my dad, right? Um, I had never really lived with my dad. I always lived with my mom. And it's crazy because as a kid, you know, I always, I always felt like I wanted to live with my dad. Like every time I would go to my dad's house, like I never wanted to leave. And my mom, I feel like she hated that shit. Like, like she hated the fact that like, I guess she felt like I looked up to my dad more than her, um, even though she was taking care of me primarily. And I feel like she, you know, was bitter about it, honestly. And uh, tried to kind of put that on me at times, like make me feel bad about about it and you know at some point we got into it um later on in life and you know i got kicked out i moved out moved back kicked out um moved with my grandma and then i moved my aunt and then i ended up you know moving back with my mom before i kicked out again or actually moved my my ex um and then you know i got my own spot so last year decided to move with my dad you know it was first time I had ever lived with my dad other than when I was a kid, you know, a baby. And uh, I just wanted to get a better relationship with him because I feel like I don't have the best relationship with my family. Um, not like on a bad way, like why I don't feel like, like I said, I love all my family. It's just more of like I see other people and I see like so many people are very family oriented. They um, do so many things with their family. They go on trips, family nights dinners all that and i feel like i never experienced that uh, as a kid we we was very um very isolated like we didn't do a lot my household we didn't go on really many trips actually i went on more trips with my aunt and uncle than my own mom honestly and um just stuff like that man like we we ate separately me and my little brother ate at the table everybody else ate in the uh other rooms and then we all just went went our own ways and i feel like because of that that caused me to be isolated in my adult years, which is now. Now that I live on my own, I feel myself very isolated from family, friends. I keep to myself. I don't really, I'm not gonna say I don't know how to interact with people because I do, but I just choose not to because that's how I grew up. I grew up very isolated in my own little zone. And then it's like, once I got my own spot, it was like, oh yeah, I really don't have to fuck with you. Bet, say less. <laughs> Especially if you piss me off. Like, what? I don't have to talk to you. And I don't have to see you. Oh, you change the game. Um, but yeah, man, like on a lighter note though, but for real, um, I, I moved with my dad because I, I wanted to get a better relationship. You know, like I wanted, I feel like when I have my own family, I don't want the same for how I grew up with my family. I want to be uh, very family oriented. I want to have a very close bonded family where my kids feel like they can come to me about anything. They don't feel intimidated or scared to talk to me about certain stuff because they feel like I might judge them. But honestly, I, I never been a person to be a judgmental person. I tell people that all the time. You know, we all make our mistakes in life and, and things like that, but who am I to judge, you know? And the Bible speaks on the truth. Judge not, lest you be judged the same judgment. You know, who are we to judge? You know, only God can judge. Um, don't cast a stone. And then get mad at those stones get cast back at you. So, you know, I, I try not to judge people, you know, based off of their mistakes. Because we all fuck up, you know, in life. But I'm not the, it's not for me to judge you. And I feel like 
in my life, I've had to deal with family judging me on, you know, their thoughts rather than being more understanding, just being stuck in their ways. And I guess for me, kind of like, because I, I don't want to go too much in the situation with my dad, but I'm going to just go a little brief. All right, so blah, 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 Buddha and my dad, shit was cool, right? Some time going on, you know, I'm, I'm getting to spend some time with my little brother too. So um, never live with my little, this this little brother. I live with my, my brother on my mama's side, but not my little brother on my dad's side. So got to spend some time with my little brother. It was real cool. Like, fuck my little brother. Shout out to Tony. Yeah. Yeah, and Justin too. And, uh, but yeah, but yeah, I, I was, um, you know, I got to spend some time with my brother and a um, little situation happened. Got into it with dad and he pretty much was like, kicked me out on some shit. Um, had his rights, but even then, like, the way he handled it, I felt like was some, damn, I don't even want to, on a cool, like, this, I'm going to be, all right, I'm going to be, I'm going to be blunt, because cause this is, this is the podcast for it. I want y'all to be, I want to be authentic and real with y'all. On the cool, how he handled the situation, I felt it was some bitch made shit, honestly. Um, as a man, like, certain things as a man that, I feel like you should be able to handle a situation with another man in a certain caliber. Uh, and the way he handled it, I felt like was some bitch shit, honestly. And, you know, after, you know, it happened, uh, I, I was on the grind. It motivated me to, you know, to move move out. Like, so I, I got a spot, got this spot in one, one week, literally. Um, after I got this spot, man, you know, my birthday was probably like a week after that. Um, birthday come came up. He kind of handled it. He handled it funny. We still weren't really tripping off of it. Uh, his birthday came up like a couple weeks after that. You know, I reached out to him for his birthday. Still kind of acting funny. So I'm like, all right, dude, tripping. Uh, Father's Day came maybe like a week after after his birthday. Honestly, At that point. I had talked to my other brother about my older brother about the situation and everything and you know, he told me blah 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 what he what he thought. I told him what was up. Like I you know, situation happened, I apologized and everything. So on Father's Day, you know, I called him and apologized. And I apologized and I left it at that. But since then, to keep it real, I haven't really fucked with him like that. Not not that um, you know, no love I still love my dad, it's just the fact that, you know, he acted the way he acted and then I had to go out my way to apologize to a grown man considering, you know, um, you know, how the, how shit happened, man. Like, I just, it's certain things that just don't rub, that rub me a certain way. And some people, like, tell me, like, oh, well, you know, you don't want to regret in life you know, um, not having a relationship with your parents and things like that, but you will have to truly understand the shit that I've been through with both my parents, my mom and my dad. They both have to essentially fuck me over in, in certain situations, mentally on, on some shit. And the fact that I have always, for the most part, been a bigger person and forgiving person because I don't like holding grudges, um, the fact that I have had to do that kind of makes you push away from them because you at some point you stop kissing people ass you know like we all make mistakes but if I'm the one that's having to apologize all the time even if I'm not in the wrong like why would I keep fucking with you and that's where I find myself at so it's like right now I'm, I you know I, I do want to have relationships with both my parents, but it's like they didn't put me in a hard spot where honestly they have to reach out to me. And um, like I said, I still love both my parents, but it's just like it's just how it is now. And some people try to make me feel bad about it, about what's well, your parents? Um, you might regret this and that. Look, I already did my part as a child. You know, I didn't apologize. Um, I done forgave this and that, but. When you continue to do certain stuff and I have to always be the, I'm good off of it. So, you know, 
I don't feel bad about the shit that, that I do now or me not having a relationship that some people might think I should have. But that's all right because it's my life to live. And that's what I want, want y'all to know. No matter what you going on in life, in your life, don't let anybody make you feel bad about your decisions on why you're doing what you do. Because I'm sure we all have our reasons of why we do what we do. And it's not for anybody else to judge you or make you feel bad about your reasoning for that. Because at the end of the day, they don't know what you feel like mentally. They don't know what you're going through. Um, and like I said, family can be toxic as hell at times. Like family can be some of the worst, honestly. They they can put you down mentally. Like, you know, even with the, the depression thing, bro. Like when I told when I told my parents that I was when I told them at different times, like that I was suicidal, just how they reacted, you know, just seeing that it was more of a downplay to like, are you dumb? Like, why would you do that? Rather than trying to figure out like, why are you unhappy? Like, what can we do to help you not be unhappy or get to that point? And, um, you know, luckily, like I said, I'm a strong mentally person, so I got through it and I'm, I'm not in that mental place ever. I told myself I'll never let myself get that low again. Um, but yeah, man, you know, mental health is, is very important and don't allow yourself. Sometimes you have to cut people out where, whether it be family or friends, you, I, you know, I, I lost a lot of friends, but, but when I think about it, were they really friends or were they just associates? Because a true friend, they'll be there for you. And, um, you know, I said, you have to, you have to like look in the mirror sometimes and, you know, see yourself and then also See the people around you and see are they really benefiting you or or if they benefiting from you. Cause there's a lot of people that are just benefiting from you but not actually benefiting you. Repeat what I just said. It's a lot of people benefiting from you but not benefiting you. It's a deep shit, right? But yeah, man, like honestly, like I say, um, do what you got to do uh, to get your mental health right. If that means you got to cut some people loose, do it. Because at the end of the day, your mental health is way more important than those relationships uh, with these so-called people that, you know, like I said, um, when it comes, it don't mean just because you cut people out don't mean you don't still have love for them. You can have love for people, but you can love people from afar. You don't have to necessarily fuck with them like that. And um, that's really what, what I want y'all to know, man. I mean, I don't want to go into too much because I feel like I can talk about this shit forever. But, um, yeah, this was like a good, I feel like this was a good starting point uh, for the first episode of the podcast. Honestly, um, I feel like I said a lot. Uh, I usually want to cut stuff out, but honestly, I want it to be, I want this to feel legit, feel real. Um, I don't want it to feel like no fake shit, like no no unauthentic, you know, content. I want everything that you get from me to to feel like you can feel it from coming straight from the heart, like from the soul. And, you know, I'm going to always keep it 100 with y'all. You know, I'm a very private person. I don't go too much into my personal life. Uh, I will, as these episodes come along, get a little bit more into my personal life without going too much details about certain stuff because I still believe everything don't need to be on the Internet. But um, I do believe, you know, certain things I, I do have to give an insight to y'all just so y'all can give a better understanding of where I'm coming from. And also understand that I do experience a lot of things. I just be keeping it on a low low. Um, but yeah, man, I hope y'all enjoy this first episode. Like, share, subscribe, share to your friends, family, your mama, your granny, your auntie, your uncle, your dog, your cat, babies, all that. <laughs> But yeah, man, hope y'all enjoy, man, and we out.